<clears throat> okay. Oh, the music. All right. And so begins my journey inward. My, uh, my, my journal, journal to, to the, the center, center of Magar. Uh, that was a waste of a rental. Happy New Year, film dorks. Anything big happening? I had to take a little break because I've been editing little video pitch decks, which are basically five minute sizzle reels based on scripts that I've written that give story information, theme information, mostly mood and kind of showing the emotion of the script that I'm trying to get across to try and entice someone to actually read the script in the long run. I thought it would be fun to introduce you guys. I made two of them and I thought it would be really cool to share them with you and let you tell me which one you like best and which movie we should go towards or if I should pick another script and make another video pitch deck because I actually have a lot of fun making these things. But that's the next two episodes. I thought before I told you specifically which movies I wanted to make that I would tell you about the influences and the filmmakers that I always lean back on no matter what film I'm gonna make, no matter what the project is. When I made Clean Sheets, it was very specifically inspired by a movie called Mikey and Nikki by Elaine May and the work of Ralph Bakshi. That was specific to Clean Sheets. All of my movies won't be Mikey and Nikki and Heavy Traffic or Fritz the Cat. That's just that one film. But the filmmakers and the movies I'm gonna tell you about today are in all of my films. They're in the two features that I made, Scrapers and Clean Sheets. And everything that I aspire to do and when I'm deciding what to do next, or I'm trying to remind myself who I am, I like to remember the bedrock foundation of it all. Last time I told you about my foundation, my influence in history, this is the stuff that I've picked and truly aspire toward. And I've turned this video into a little exercise that we can both do that I think if you're the same kind of film dork as I am, you'll actually end up having fun doing what I did. I'm gonna introduce it to you. I call it the filmmaker color wheel. I came up with the filmmaker color wheel because I wanted to remove it from the religious connotation that I had put it in my head before, namely the holy trinity of filmmakers. I don't know if other people think about stuff like this, but I'm constantly relying on, oh, these three guys, I'm right in the middle of those. I'm not saying I am, I'm just saying that if I had all of the time and all of the resources to become the greatest filmmaker that I could possibly be, that's the direction I would head in. That's why we're doing the video today, because maybe you just hate everything I'm about to say and, you know, Good on you, so long. Or we'll find a lot of common ground and we'll continue walking the walk together. So when I'm looking at these filmmakers, I decided to make a color wheel of outdoor filmmakers that I aspire toward. And that's in reference to history and in reference to style. As far as style goes, the themes of the filmmaker, the shots, the dialogue, the performances, and the rhythm of the whole thing. The vibe. The other part of that is the artist themselves. I'm not one of those people who can very easily separate the art from the artist, which is a different video altogether. But the history of the filmmaker, that means their personal history, but also the advice that they give, the quotes that they have, and also the stories that other filmmakers and other people around them tell about them. All of these things play to create, I don't know them personally, but it's something to work toward. The way I play the color wheel is, if you were basing this only on the information that I gave you on the last video, <laughs> it would basically be a color wheel of Mel Brooks, Jim Carrey, and Adam Sandler. And the stuff I wanted to make or the things I wanted to do were right in the middle of that. I've grown up just a smidge. Yes, that's still very much a part of me. What was fun about doing this color wheel is that there are the primary colors and the secondary colors. So mine right now consists of Hal Ashby, John Cassavetes, and Stanley Kubrick. Again, I could only dream to be as good as these guys. 
but I do dream to be as good as these guys. And then the secondary filmmakers, which you'll see, are P.T. Anderson, the Coen brothers, and Martin Scorsese. None of these are very hot takes. It's just, this is where I find myself. I find myself really loving, character-driven, heart-based films. And after I talk about my influences, I'm gonna show you all the different ways you can make your own color wheel, all the different ways to apply your own art and your own style and the things that you aspire to, to your own color wheel. And I'll post one on my Facebook page and you can find it on Google Image Search if you want to. I hope you stick around because it's fun if you're a film dork like me. Why those top three? Why my primary colors of Ashby, Cassavetes, and Kubrick? Hell Ashby because his films incorporate the soul of everything that I want to do. He makes it seem so effortless. But somehow, the stories that he tells are so tiny and so personal and yet reflect these amazing universal truths. And it's fun listening to other filmmakers talk about Harold and Maude because it's inspired so many filmmakers that we love from Judd Apatow to Cameron Crowe to Wes Anderson. There's an ease to his work and an honesty and a softness to his prime work. If he gets under your skin, it's hard to shake how you can make a film that honest and seemingly truthful to the human emotional experience. Why Cassavetes? His films are a raw, exposed nerve. The passion of Cassavetes cannot be duplicated. And what's funny is when I first met Dakota, who's the star of Scrapers and Clean Sheets, the reason why he told me he liked Cassavetes was the reason I just told you that I like Hal Ashby. And that was the night I asked him to play Hal in Scrapers. That's why he's named Hal. It's the seeming truth of it all. It's the honesty. I can't say the word raw enough. His movies are so unique and there is a lot of improv and a lot of character work and it's most important to the actors to be true to their character no matter where the story takes it. And then Kubrick, the hottest take of them all. I'm just in the camp that Kubrick is objectively the greatest. And you can disagree with me if you want. I'm a little stubborn about it. Right, Bones? There's nothing that I can say about Stanley Kubrick right now that will be at all eye-opening. I just think he's the objective greatest. So therefore, he has to be on here. If you're gonna think about filmmaking, you have to play four-dimensional chess. And it's, and it's hard. <laughs> and I still don't understand how or why he did the things that he did. I'm, again, just in the camp that he is the objective greatest. Feel free to disagree with me all you want. That's fine. So every time I'm shooting, every time I'm thinking about actors, every time I'm thinking about a project, and I don't know where I'm going or I feel rudderless, these three are my rudder and they're my primary colors. I will always lean back on them. For scrapers and clean sheets, they were huge, huge inspirations, particularly Hal Ashby and John Cassavetes. And I found these primary colors by falling in love with the filmmakers that fell in love with them. That's why my secondary colors are the way that they are. Coen Brothers, Martin Scorsese, and P.T. Anderson. I love all of those movies. All of the films by all of these filmmakers are so specifically, uniquely them. No matter what genre they do, no matter if it seems like it's completely off the beaten path. The guys who made Raising Arizona made The Lady Killers. The guy who made Magnolia followed it up with Punch Drunk Love. And Scorsese is more than a secondary color. He really wrote a lot of the cinematic language that I'm very, very, very into. And that so many others are very into as well. Mean Streets is so incredible. That being said, Mean Streets is very inspired by 
foreign films uh, that he was watching at the time. Yes, the early American gangster films combined with these French new wave and Italian neorealism, like all of it kind of put together made the 1970s new American look, which I'm absolutely obsessed with. Sometimes I think I'm obsessed with it because it's rather flat. A lot of times it's shot from far away and the lens is zoomed in so that the characters are in focus, but whatever's going on in the background, sorry, background, out of focus. And I think that's because I've worn glasses most of my life. I don't know if it's more than that, but there's some connection that I have to taking off my glasses, wearing my glasses, and the flatness of it all that I see this true beauty in all of the movies. If you notice, you know, my primaries all were making movies at the same time. And my secondaries are all making movies at the same time. Scorsese kind of bridges the two. But you know Scorsese was influenced by Kubrick. You know he was aiming towards Kubrick. And they were not in the same school or the same class, whatever you want to say. And the Coen brothers and P.T. Anderson are very, very adamant and clear that they aspire toward similar primaries as mine. I know that there are other filmmakers. I know that these, it's not set to these. Again, this is me. I'm telling you about me, but I really want to know about you because I decided to make this color wheel for outdoor filmmakers, but you can make your color wheel for literally anything. Literally anything. Are you an author? Do you want to write a book? Do you want to just write a screenplay? Are you a musician? Are you in a band? Do you want to be a solo musician? You can do one of these for your favorite solo musicians. And I'm right in the middle of Neil Young and you know, Neil Young, Bleachers, and uh, the Beatles. I, uh, sure, you can do it for any art. It's for you. It's for you to remember what's your favorite thing to lean back on? What's your favorite art to lean back on? What never fails to inspire you? And what do you always aspire toward? What's the star that you are shooting toward? It's something to look at when you're starting a script and you're saying, oh, I should do this because it'll sell. Oh, I should do this because that's cool. Oh, I've never seen this before, so let me go with that. That'll only last you so long. That'll give you 10 pages. That'll give you half a script, but it will not give you a full script, I guarantee you, until you put that, that bit of heart, that mm, into it. And leaning back on your influences for me it always is like man that's a a you can do just directors you can do just dps you can do just movies so i made a bunch of different examples of different color wheels that don't necessarily reflect me but might reflect some people that i know if you see yourself in any of these Cool. I'm shouting you out. I am not roasting. I promise you. So it can go as specific and as artsy as you want to as huge and basic as you want. So I made one that's, oh, here's Tarkovsky mixed with Bergman mixed with Akira Kurosawa. Enjoy your heady ass five hour movie. Puts you in a spot, doesn't it? I don't know who your secondaries would be. But you can go as huge as a franchise, right? Star Wars, mixed with Marvel, mixed with Harry Potter. And I actually did some of the work with that. The secondaries seem to be like Steven Spielberg and Ghostbusters and Steven Spielberg again. I made one uh, for Bones. I, she will probably make a much more specific one, but I thought this would be fun because it mixes movies with studios with directors. You can mix it up, match, and do all of it. So this is my one that was inspired by Bones, which is Princess Bride, Studio Ghibli, and Tim Burton. And then I realized that right in the center of that is Stardust, which is a great film, and uh, Bones will like that. I know I have a horror fan, so it would be really fun. I know so many people that a Wes Craven, Sam Raimi, John Carpenter, 
primary color is like huge. And then your secondaries can be their movies or their influences. You can take it in any direction that you want. There are no rules to it. It's just about looking at something and seeing your aspirations and inspirations reflected right back at you. And I think it was fun. It was a lot of fun for me to come up with mine. I've been trying to figure out a way to make this video to tell you about my influences so that now we can move forward and I can tell you about uh, Vermonter and I can tell you about the pug and these scripts that I really want to make. And if you want to help me make them, you can join my Patreon and become an associate producer and we'll discover the joys of Patreon together. Um, and I think that's all I got. Go to my Facebook page, join. Uh, there's going to be a color wheel right there that you can steal. Write everything down in the comments. Tell me your primaries, your secondaries. Tell me what you like. Share your experiences with me. Tell me if this is a very, very silly, silly thing. Shout outs to Dave McNair. Love you. I love you, Bones. Thank you for all of your inspiration. I couldn't do anything without you. Let's watch Stardust together. Join me on Twitch. We're writing a screenplay together. Uh, I also do some art there with my new alcohol markers that Bones bought me. Watch my features on Prime. Watch my videos on YouTube. And I will see you in the future. Mm.